Welcome to all you geek enthusiasts and nerd aficionados. This is the All Things Nerd Podcast brought to you by Malice-Corp. This is a Season 3, Episode 33, Mess is Taking a B-Day Break. I thought it was going to be called something like the inmates run the asylum, but, you know, you know, it is what it is. So you have me, Masonic Vader, coming back after a two-week hiatus when probably our ratings were super high because I wasn't on. Uh, but I am back running the show tonight, or at least hosting it. With me, joining me tonight, uh, we have A.A. Ron. How you doing, sir? I am amazing. Thank you for asking. It's been a while since I've been on, too, so uh, hopefully I'll get back into the swing of things here quick. Oh, yeah, this is going to be a rusty show for a couple of us, I think. And then I think another person joined us back after a little bit of a break, unless he was on last week. We've got uh, the Red, the Raider. Nick, how you doing, sir? I'm doing really well. I was on last week. I know I was on a bit of hiatus before that. Um, ready for the three-day weekend. Ready to do absolutely nothing but watch college football. <laughs> We're in a cowboy jersey. <laughs> um, and, and then, of course, we have our mainstay, Icy Zorro. Sir, how you doing today? Uh, I've been on too much. Somebody give me a break. <laughs> no, can't have it, dude. You're like the bouncer. We just can't let it. You, you got to be there. Just kind of stand outside and cross my arms every once in a while. Exactly. Right. And I, I do believe this is probably the first all beard crew we've had in a while. Maybe. Yeah, I can tell you right now, I'm trying to get my early entry in for the, the Epic Beard Awards at the end of the year. Yeah. So you guys are seeing it. It's happening. I think this is the first year where I, like this early, I already have candidates in mind for the Epic Beard. I was. And welcome to the chat room to Dazney Port Kid. Hey, welcome. Thank you, guys. Thank you for joining. Please, if you're on, once again, Twitch, put some comments in there as the show goes on. We want to hear your positive thoughts. If you are listening to us via any type of uh, audio listening device, no video, please enjoy the show. But we definitely want to see you on here if you can, Twitch live, which uh, reminds me that if you do check us out on Twitch and you are part of Amazon, that means you give the give a free subscription uh, on or you get a free subscription on Twitch. Feel free to give it to us. It helps us out, get things moving, and maybe we could actually add a light or two to kind of off balance some of us pasty guys who haven't been on for a while. Hey, Ron and myself, you know, there you go. So, hey, I'm always as <laughs> pasty. Doesn't matter how right, many lights we put in. Right there with you, buddy. Um, so, if you've been in this, watching this show, you know we always start off with getting our geek on. So let's get our geek on. I want to start off just because I I am like giddy as a schoolgirl about this, and I'm sure we'll talk about it in the next couple of months. The biggest news I think in entertainment, which we're not going to talk about right now, was uh, three days ago. We get notified that on December 21st, SNL, the host for Saturday Night Live, and I believe that will be the Christmas show. Eddie Murphy, 35 years since that guy's been on the show as an actual cast, or at least uh, doing the thing. I've been watching Saturday Night Live, uh, God, probably since I was six, and I go back and I watch all the old shows with uh, Belushi and whatnot, and Eddie Murphy has got to be one of the best things, and to see that he's going to be coming back after 35 years, uh, yeah, we're going to be talking about that in about two months. I mean, I they so. have to have him do Buckwheat. Or uh, at least Gumby, like there's. Well, there's a lot I don't know how they James Brown they can bring back. Yeah, James Brown celebrity hot tub, I think will be good. But I don't know. But we apparently died. So unless that was some kind of a conspiracy, we'll have to see. So, um, hey, hey, Ron, what are you geeking out about this week, buddy? Well, right now, I am waiting. As soon as this podcast is over, I'm going to boot up a game called Control. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. It's from the uh, same people that made Quantum Break. Uh, it's Platinum Games, I believe. Can't remember. So don't quote me on that. The same people that made Quantum Break, though. And that's been my thing that I've been waiting for. Uh, just got released, I believe, on Tuesday. So I had to wait a couple days to pick it up. But that's my geek right now, is I'm waiting for that game. It looks amazing. Anticipation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, I, I pretty much could guess what Raider's going to talk about. He's already kind of spooned it out there. But, hey, what are you geeking out about this week, buddy? Uh, it's actually not going to be college football that I'm going to bring up. Um, I <laughs> Way to ruin the setup. 
Yeah, no joke. Thanks. Uh, I'm sorry, but I had something else that I watched. Um, I binge watched season two of Mine Hunter. Oh, amazing! Loved it. Yeah, well done. Um, great well done. show. If 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 any of y'all listening have not watched Mine Hunter uh, now since season one and two are out, you can just binge watch it. I highly. I don't even know what it, it's about. Dren. It's about, uh, it's about the, uh, killers and FBI. Yeah, the, the same. Have you seen Criminal Minds? Yeah. It's a more in depth look at the birth of the BAU. So, okay. like when they flash back to Rossi and uh, and whoever freaking, God, I can't remember his name now. He hasn't been on the show for so long. Uh, but when they flash back to the, the cases that set them up as a major player in the FBI, that's what they're looking at. They're looking at back in the 60s. Uh, they've already they've talked to several serial killers, but uh, most recently, I think, was Manson, right? Manson yeah, was the last Manson. Manson. Uh, yeah, basically, uh, so, yeah. they hire serial killers to get a better profile. Of how this is this is true life like. stuff and not a not yeah, like a drama. This is, this is, yeah, this is based the real the deal. FBI. Well, not real deal, but it's as it's as historically accurate as they can make it while still making it entertaining. Real okay. serial killers, fake FBI agents. Like the FBI agents aren't actual. So you've apparently that. been on a real true crime kick the last few weeks. <laughs> so, so, in other words, it's Agent Smith for everybody, right? Right. Something, something like that. But by the way, Ruru two and uh, wow, look at that mess. Uh, he sneaked that one in there. Fortunately, he's a uh, Ruru two and Mess have joined us in on the uh, chat. Uh, yeah, Ruru two says uh, Eddie Murphy should do a Pluto Nash skip. That would be hilarious. Uh, probably funnier than the movie was. And Matt says that he wants Buckwheat sings the current hits, which would be amazing. Now remember, it's uh, Buckwheat, not Buckwheat, sure. Buckwheat. <laughs> sure. I still, I, I'm sorry, I, that, 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 that skit, Buckwheat Sings, is just <laughs> phenomenal. That's all I got to say, phenomenal. Um, I see Zora, what are you geeking about this week, huh? Um, so I know that I'm several years late on this one, but I've been playing <laughs> four. Um, I just, I never really got into the Fallout games until, uh, I ran out of all the other stuff to play and, and my roommate happened to have Fallout 4. So I've been playing that a bit. Um, How do you like it so far? It starts out really slow. There's so much stuff to look at. You have to look everywhere and pick up all the stuff. There's too much. It reminds me of Diablo 2. You're constantly on a search for more bag space trying to figure out where to put stuff it's too much stuff so just not to not to burst your bubble or anything but if you ever switch to 76 you're gonna hate that in your camp because they, <laughs> they do the same thing in your backpack to the camp and the messed up <laughs> part is they let all this stuff hey we got some cool stuff you put in your camp but you have no room to put it hey anyway, yeah. sorry well sorry to jump in there. <laughs> I'm, i mean i'm still i'm still in like the opening quests you know i'm like yeah i accidentally put my mech suit down in the bottom of the quarry and uh it's I, I can't figure out where to get concrete to build a water resource thing. It's frustrating so far, but I like it, and I'll probably keep going. Yeah, next day, next year, two months. Two months, he's going to be coming out and be like, "Oh, you need to come on Fall Four. You got to see my huge mansion <laughs> I made out of stone and brick. It's it's like six levels of awesome, crazy. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So it's <laughs> so it's uh, so it's uh, Call of Duty crossed with Minecraft. Is that what we're talking about? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, I'll go Great. with that one. That's a good. That's good. Um, and then I watched. Uh, I watched the first season of The Boys. Holy crap! Um, yeah, that, that was fun. Oh man, I I was expecting more gore from the way you guys reacted before. I mean, it's definitely a hardcore show, but oh no, that wasn't that wasn't very gore heavy. There were a couple of times where I was like, "That's a lot of blood." <laughs> yeah, I mean, just that that in that first episode, that was interesting, but. Uh, so, <laughs> to watch the first season, I'm going to now read the comics. Uh, but I've also been reading The Wheel of Time. I've been catching up on that. I'm currently up through uh, close to the end of book seven, Crown of Swords. So I've been kind of alternating. Like, I'll read a bunch of character viewpoint uh, chapters in, in the Wheel of Time series, and then I'll go and read an issue of the comics just so that I can balance it out. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm just going to get stuck on one or the other for a while. So uh, our producer, Jack Malice, chimed in in the chat room. Fallout 4, the search for more bag space. Seriously. I, I believe that is accurate there. And then, well, that also, and that also relates to the other. 
mess falls up that's every rpg <laughs> yeah well that, that also that plays along well with the earlier thing that he said uh when people were asking what he, or when you're saying what people have been geeking out on he said the uh, wow classic just came out earlier this week we were talking about that on pre-show yeah the quest for more back space yes still wait for space balls too. the search for more money let's go man messing with me soon i mean hopefully. mel brooks is still kicking right so oh, theoretically yeah. He got Winnie Mel Brooks. He needs to. Yeah, we need it. We need it. Yeah, I don't think. Team. I don't think he'll need. I don't think he'll need the makeup to do yoga. That's what I was about to say. Yeah. 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 <laughs> awesome. Hey. All right. Well, let 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 us move on. Let's get into that nerd news. So we've got some cool stuff. It's been kind of uh, a little quiet this week, but we do have some good talk topics to talk about tonight. Um, I put a little twist to it. I gave some thought when we were going through the headlines. As you noticed, I kind of put some uh, titles and stuff. You know, it was kind of cool, you know, and it was all off the top of my head. I mean, we noticed. I don't know if the audience knows. Well, they're about to notice right now because I'm going to read them word for word. Do it. Yes. The first one, we're going to be talking about suicide news. Nathan Fillin and I can't say their name. So, I see. can you help me out with the second one because I don't want to butcher another name? Taika Waititi. Waititi. Thank you. And talks for Suicide Squad. So, as everyone knows, James Gunn's taken over Suicide Squad, and I know all of us geeks are excited about that. Except it does push Guardians of the Galaxy back, but whatever. Um, and they've, they've, it sounds like they're getting, uh, they're, they're, they're bringing a lot of the old cast back, uh, but they're also adding in some solid ones. And there's two names. I mean, obviously, start off with Nathan Phil. I think I, the first thing that people don't realize about it, and if you read the article about it, he's been in every James Gunn movie. Yep. In one way or yeah, another, I, I, didn't, I didn't realize that. Yeah, that's like Sam Raimi with his car and Bruce Campbell. Like, <laughs> got this, got that '76 Plymouth in there. Yeah, he did uh, the voice of the uh, uh, in Guardians of the Galaxy. Was the voice of the inmate. I think that was the one where he's going to slather somebody up with sauce or something like that. Yeah, um, then, sounds then, about right. Yeah, Groot stuck twigs in his nose. Yeah, that was exactly. <laughs> yeah, but what's cool about that, and, and and what I like about it is because a lot of people. Uh, know him from Firefly and Serenity. Uh, he's got a cult following with that. He's doing a show right now. I can't think of the television show he's doing. I think it's called The Rookie or something like that. It's a cop show yeah. or something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So and he was on I'm, Castle I'm for like seven and a half years, seven years. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited to see him kind of get into his uh, into what I don't want to call it his base or whatever, but I think that's I think it's exciting news. He's going to get back into some kind of a comic book kind of like. Kind of role, you know. What, what do you guys think? He never really left the comic book role. I mean, he did uh, Captain Hammer with a uh, Doctor uh, Horrible Singer. Doctor Horrible blog. Uh, and he's played the uh, Green Lantern in a lot of the DCU uh, cartoon movies. So yeah, uh, and things with a similar vibe, like uh, he did uh, two seasons of Con Man. Yeah, so he's uh, he's he's okay. definitely. Never, he's always had one foot in that pool. I mean, he's he, he went to the dramas on ABC, and that's that was a good move for him, I think. Uh, because he had, he he expanded his fan base a lot with, uh, with Castle. Castle was he really blew up with that, uh, absolutely. So, yeah, him coming back to play, and I think it's better that he's doing it live action now because he has that charisma, he has that that Han Solo charm almost. So, it's very good to see him, absolutely. Uh, stepping into a role like this yeah because he i think the first thing that i he plays an amazing anti-hero so oh yeah no the first thing that i ever saw him in was uh, as the priest caleb and buffy where yeah. he was you know crazy evil priest <laughs> um and that was that was amazing and if you go back and watch that it's amazing how young he looks as well um yeah i mean i think the guy i, I agree with aa ron i think he's uh even if he hasn't been uh, front and center in like comic style properties uh, like he's always been part of that community. He's the guy that's, that kind of recognizes where he came right. out of, and that that cult following that he built over time, and has not really lost love for them. I'm still just upset that he's at this point kind of too old to play Nathan Drake. Well, he did play Nathan Drake in the the short film that they put on uh, on YouTube. That was really <laughs> cool to see. I missed that, and I'm going to need a link later. You need, yeah, I'll, I'll not a Richard link later. I think Captain Marvel's proved that there's no uh, nothing could stop you from going back and playing something now. As Nick Fury looked a little young, 
Samuel L. Jackson was uh, looking spry in that movie, huh? That's a fair point. I don't know. Yeah. That's true. Nick, you look like you're uh, you're pondering there, sir. What's going on there? Well, I was going to say that Samuel L. Jackson, he, he really never aged. I mean, the guy looks like the same he did in the 90s almost without yeah, the CGI. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, he looks yeah, exactly like he did in Die Hard 2. Right? Absolutely. And, 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 then, and, then, <laughs> and, then, and then you got, uh, God, say his name again, I see. Taika Waititi. Thank you. See, I at least acknowledge my faults when it comes to names, and I'll let someone else say it, unlike someone else who runs the show. I'm looking back. I just for for later. I'm really upset that Mest isn't going to be here to try to say all the names from the Mortal Kombat. <laughs> yeah, well, but you know what's interesting about him getting into this is he's one of the few guys where I'm seeing this balancing act. Uh, where absolutely, and, uh, yeah. Most of the time, you see people that go acting, and most of their career is going to be acting until they finally say, "Okay, I'm done," and then they switch to behind the cameras and they become directors, producers, whatever. Uh, and maybe do an occasional spotlight in a show or something. He is bouncing back and forth between now directing and now starring in movies. I mean, he came out, he did Thor Ragnarok. He's now slated for Thor, uh, the next Thor movie. He's now jumping his hand into uh, Guardians. Uh, well, I think it's a Guardians of the Galaxy 2, if I'm not mistaken. Did I miss that? Mm. It's just Suicide Squad right no, now? No, he's... No, he's doing uh, Thor: Love and Thunder. He's directing. Yeah, yeah, Thor: Love and Thunder, and then he's at Suicide, Suicide Squad. Funny note: mm, we were talking yeah, so about he's, he's also balancing. He's also balancing comic universes there. Yeah, it's crazy. It's 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 amazing. Could you imagine fifteen years ago saying that guy was in a Marvel movie is now doing a DC movie and he's gonna be doing another Marvel movie? That would never happen like 15, 20 years ago. Um, I'm excited about having him in there because I like his acting ability. I, uh, well, okay, outside of Green Lantern. He annoyed the heck out of me in that movie. Um, but his other characters have been really good and stuff. Nick, what are your thoughts, man? What do you, uh, How are you feeling about these guys jumping in on the Suicide Squad? Well, it can only go up from where it uh, left off. <laughs> I mean, Suicide Squad, the first one, wasn't really that great. So uh, I'm just hoping that it uh, – they add value and make it better. Uh, the the yeah, cast list, go, as go. of right now, uh, the, the articles that we're looking at is that Taika Waititi and Nathan Fillion may be joining, um, and Nathan Fillion may be a major role in the movie, but I don't think they're actually confirmed at this point. So right now, uh, the cast is what? Is from one what I read, I, I was boning up on everything beforehand. Uh, I'm pretty sure that Taika Waititi is still in talks. Nathan Fillion is actually signed off. Okay. So he's well, slated. That makes me happy. Well, then the, the cast right now is Margot Robbie, Viola Davis, Jai Courtney, Joel, and Joel Kinnaman coming back, as well as Idris Elba, David Dasmalkian, who I freaking love that actor. Uh, he's yeah. so creepy. He's the guy that's always got like the, uh, well, he was like the Joker decoy in Dark Knight. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Daniela Melchior, I don't know. Flula Borg, I've heard that name. Steve Ag is going to be playing King Shark, and that's fantastic. Yeah. Flula Borg, I, I haven't watched any of his movies, but I've seen a lot of interviews that he does. That guy is hilarious. He's one of the funniest, nice. natural, most naturally funny human beings that I've ever seen in my life. He, it, so if he's going to be in it, hopefully they, they use him properly because he could be seriously, he could be, he could be really great. Yeah, well, the people that I know of in this, you know, that are that are cast in this already, for the most part, are really high quality, good actors. Uh, so hopefully, they just kill off Jai Courtney in the first five minutes, and then it's actually a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> and I was about to say they pick, they brought back the interesting characters from the movie that you know, obviously, you're, you're gonna have Harley Quinn and and you're gonna have Captain Boomerang and whatnot. I I I actually did kind of like the version he had of Captain Boomerang. Uh, I'm hoping that he has a little bit better part in it. I think with the last Suicide Squad, there was too much balancing of all the personalities. I'm hoping this one is just – and I think James Gunn, obviously, with Guardians of the Galaxy, does a phenomenal job of balancing out these different personalities. So when, uh, when Nick, you said, hey, it can only get better, the minute that James Gunn's name was put to it, you already know it's going to be better. It's now just a matter of – I mean, come on, Idris Elba being on there. That guy's on fire with all the movies he's been uh, – last one being Hobbs and Shaw. So – uh, yeah, yeah, it's going to be awesome. And considering how well he did, and that being the black Superman, <laughs> hey, I, <laughs> he's, 
He's going to be a really huge asset. And I think you're right. Absolutely. Uh, James Gunn can only take this this part of the franchise for D- the DCEU. And he can he can only skyrocket it from. <laughs> he's he's literally building a mansion out of a trash fire. I hope so. That's <laughs> who do you? Rumor really. brings up a uh, rumor two brings up a good question there. Who do you think Suicide Squad is going to be fighting against? Uh, he met, uh, he mentioned in there he want to see he want to see Lobo. What do you guys think? Who do you think? Because uh, uh, I don't know if they've actually announced the villain yet. Ooh, no, they haven't. I hadn't really thought of what they were going to uh, to pit them against. Honestly, uh, I just wanted to see them hopefully build a better team than they did, and not try and rely on having the Joker in it or having Batman cameos or anything like that. Just give us the squad versus anything, and no just Jared Leto you- as Joker. Exactly, and just have have the squad as the squad, and just hit them against whatever, and just have them go nuts. Let their characters freaking go crazy, and well, crazy on the leash, obviously, but just let them go nuts, and let them let the actors play their roles, and don't worry about necessarily too much of a plot. But I think that I, th- I, th- I think the general public. The general public doesn't know enough about uh, who the suicide, you know, classic suicide villains have been. Uh, they can, as long as they pick somebody that's interesting, how they can create a new one. Although that would probably piss off comic fans. Um, as long as it's balanced, you know, and 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 engaging. I don't care. They could be fighting a seventy-two-year-old grandma, whatever. <laughs> Which I, I could see that happening. To be honest with you, uh, I let, let's move on to the next one. Uh, next part of our news, fatality. <laughs> Mortal Kombat reboot in the make. They're getting everything's they're getting their cast going and everything. This week they've actually added two new names to the cast, which I'm actually excited about. These guys, you've seen them in some movies lately. Um you've got, let's see here, Shang Tsung, uh play uh let's see, uh Shang Tsung uh, characters are be played by Chin Han. Him. Thank you, Chin Han. Is going to be played by Shang Tsun, and Hiroko Sonata is going to be playing Scorpion. So, yeah. yeah, So Chin Han, I think the last movie we saw him in was the second Batman movie. He was the uh, the banker uh, that took all the yeah, the banker. Yeah, exactly. Hong Kong. Which I don't uh, I don't picture that face as being Shang Tsun. Like two guys that that got announced here, uh, I could have sworn it was going to be the other way around as to who was going to be what, because the other guy Hiroki Sonata. Uh, what else was he in? He was in a bunch of other stuff. He's like, uh, I think he was also was he? He was, uh, he was actually just in a uh, Endgame because he was wasn't he the uh, the guy that Ronan uh, sliced and diced right before yes, uh, Black Widow? Picked yeah, him up, right? yeah, yeah. Like classic, like Japanese gangster looking. And that guy's gonna be yeah, playing but, Scorpion. I really he was thought he was gonna take over the Shang Tsung role. Yeah, he was also in Westworld, and uh, he was in the Last Samurai too. But, uh, with Tom yeah, Cruise. and I think he was so, in the Lost. Yeah like lost season six so so to your point i see what you're saying there but the, the thing i like about casting him at uh, chin han as a uh, shang zone is every 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 movie i've seen him in he's got that smart guy kind of like i'm gonna i'm either gonna beat you physically but i can also beat you mentally as well kind of thing and i think that's something that's going to bring a unique uh part of it to that character itself I mean, he is the he boss, is so kind of the the cocky nerd that's always playing chess while everybody else is playing checkers, kind of thing. Exactly, yeah. and and underlying, he could kill you with the pawn. I mean, literally, that's that's what I think would happen there. Um, or Goro. And I don't know yeah. what's that. He could also kill you with Goro. Good point. Yeah, there is that as well. Um, Nick, what do you think, sir? I like that Mortal Kombat is being um, rebooted, but. I do not know those actors. The only two actors that are of Asian descent that I could actually know are Jackie Chan and Jet Li. That's it. <laughs> not even, not even Ken. Everybody Lennon. else, no, nobody. I, I mean, there's, there's that guy no. from um, the Last Samurai that, um, like, if I saw him in something, I'd be like, oh, it's him. Um, and then the dude from Jurassic Park, um, the the scientist that. Help create the dinosaurs. Oh yeah, that's in all oh, the Jurassic Park movies. Yeah, exactly. He's, he's really yeah, the guy that played Hugo Strange. Yeah, 
Yeah, so, he's really recognizable, but everybody else, like, I, I don't recognize their face from anything. So, so far, looking at, if you look at the article, the cast they have, uh, they're going to have Sub-Zero Ooh, come back, it. played by Joe Teslam. Uh, Ludi Lin is going to be playing Liu Kang. Jessica uh, McNamee is going to be playing Sonya Blade, which I, I, I was, I mean, I'm just throwing this out there because I remember that the, they just, I guess, the video game, they had Ronda Rousey play her. Yes. Yeah, but I, I, I thought they might have tried to do that crossover just for the name, but thank goodness they didn't. All right. Uh, Joss Lawson is going to be playing Kano. Uh, Tadano, o, Tadano Obu Asano is going to be playing Raiden. I think I'm doing good on these names. Um, Tadano, Kyle no, Brooks. Tadano, Tadano Obu. Yeah, is uh, Jackson going to be playing Jax? And then Sissy Stringer is going to be playing Melina. So, I mean, they're, they're bringing back a lot of the original characters, which are good, at least the fan favorites. And I'm sure this isn't the last one. I'm sure they're going to probably cast some other people in. Uh, Aaron, what, a. a. Ron, what do you think, buddy? I'm excited for it, honestly. I like the they, – they're putting together people who have really good acting chops and really good fighting choreography uh, experience. Um, the moment I'm most excited for, honestly, I saw that uh, – I saw Sonya Blades casting today. I think that's good. I saw her in, and she was in the Jason Statham movie, The Meg, recently. Uh, so she's got good acting. Haven't seen the fighting choreography, unfortunately. So I'm hoping that she gets uh, some decent training in that. But Joe Taslim, uh, who is going to play Sub Zero, I am super excited to see this guy. Uh, I don't know if you've seen The Raid Redemption, uh, one of the best action movies oh, to come out. That guy, oh, yeah. okay. It's one of the best acting action movies to come out in the past five years. It's absolutely brilliantly done. Nonstop freaking martial arts bonanza. It's amazing. And uh, John Joe Wick Tyler, three came out. What's that? <laughs> Until John Wick three came out. Now it's just right from the beginning. As much as, I, as much as I love the John Wick franchise, and I will I will go to bat for that franchise at, at any day. Uh, I actually like the Raid two the better. Because John Wick only, three, John Wick three is BB King. The Raid Redemption is uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan. There you go. That's a good. That's a nice. good way to put it. Because uh, yeah, it's it's bonkers how much they shoved into one building for this action sequence. It's, it's just amazing. And Joe Taslim was one of the highlights of that uh, that entire movie. So hopefully, seeing him uh, as Sub Zero is going to be something really special. Now, I see. Do they go uh, video game can't be like the first one, or do you think this is going to be like hardcore serious? I don't know, man. I I think there's with this list of actors, it looks like they're putting in some serious production value. It's not going to be the mid '90s. Hey, let's make some money <laughs> off the series. It's going to be. I mean, honestly, you know, it has to be a lot of action all the time. But things like the John Wick franchise uh, and. <laughs> Serious have proved that you can do constant action and still have it just be fun and even semi plot driven. It's, yeah, I'm hoping, it's, I'm hoping it's not just going to be like, hey, we got all these people from all these realms, let's make them fight. I mean, although that's got to be the central concept, hopefully, there's more to the story than that. Hopefully, I mean, you, you, I, I think you're along the, the right lines when you're saying that the production value is obviously going to be higher, and I think that they'll have so much. Well, no, I don't think. I know that they're going to have so much more to work with considering the amount of lore that's come out of the Mortal Kombat games since. Oh, absolutely. So they've got storylines to work with. They've got story arcs to work with. They've got character development. They've got deaths and, and resurrections to deal with. So they're going to have so much more material to build this movie off of. And it's, yeah, I want to see just layers and layers of Easter eggs in the background. Oh, yeah. If somebody doesn't yell toasty at least one time during this movie, Toasty! Mm. <laughs> yes. I forgot about that. Did you want to start talking about Telltale? Yeah, all right. So, yeah, Telltale Games is making a return, um, which is actually kind of exciting because I was getting into those games right before they decided to yank them from me. Um, so let me go on here really quick because uh, I had it written down on a lost page. LCG Entertainment. Uh, is going to be reviving Telltale Games. Uh, they shut down last year from the art, what the article is saying, uh, but it looks like they're bringing it back, and it looks like they're going back into their uh, their stuff and going back to look for some of the uh, 
bring back some of their old catalog. So Wolf Among Us, Batman. I think I saw some uh, stuff about Galaxy, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, Power Rangers, Duck Dynasty. Wow, interesting. Um, the the status of previous Telltale licenses, such as Borderlands, Game of Thrones, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Minecraft, has not been announced. So we don't know where all this stuff is going. But apparently, like yeah, LCG Entertainment decided to resurrect that company and you know mine out some of the the gold nuggets. Um, Hopefully, you know, I mean, basically they're saying, hey, we're just, we're going to try to keep the high quality and the entertainment, you know, like story driven games going uh, and just not overreach like previous management did. Yeah, and hopefully they succeed because Telltale Games had a really good thing going. Uh, the Walking Dead games that they put out, the Batman game that they put out, they were really, really, like you said, story driven. And you don't see a lot of that. Uh, coming out not as much anymore uh it's it's more action based and uh more the story driven things go lean toward rpg types and uh yeah hopefully uh hopefully they'll they'll restart a good thing here yeah and then as added bonus it looks like there's a class action lawsuit going against the old company which is not going to affect the new company so that means they don't have to worry about going into something trying to sign off on it and give it money right off the bat they could just go right into producing what they can start rebuilding everything and like like ian said like the article said not overreach uh it, it's almost like they saw what they had in certain games especially when they got to the walking dead and decided oh we can make a telltale out of everything let's make a telltale out of a nursery home setting yay let's do that um, and, and that's where they kind of lost it. And poor management, I guess, was the other thing because they just had their head up their ass, I guess. So uh, that's exciting. What kind, of, what kind of Telltale games would you like them to see that they haven't done yet? Nick, let's start with you, buddy. Anything that's open-world RPG, uh, nothing specifically. Um, oh. I can't think of one off the top of my head. I see. Do you have a theme that you would like them to, to do? I want them to pick up and start doing uh, story-driven stuff like like mid '90s Sierra games were, you know, like expand. That'd be amazing. Yeah, because I mean, if you want to be story-driven, those are some classic examples. Now, granted, those ones from the mid '90s, like King's Quest and uh, Space Quest and Gabriel Knight, like they didn't take that long to play. Really, you could play the entire game maybe about twelve to you know ten to ten to fourteen hours of gameplay if you knew what you're doing. Um, mm. So obviously. To expand that out, but something like that, you know, the the original storytelling. It it does show promise too. Uh, going back to something like that because they did re-release uh, and remaster and completely redo the King's Quest games, uh, and they sold well. They're beautiful, and the story-driven uh, point-and-click adventure is, is still fun, still relevant, oh, yeah. and they could do a lot with it. I mean, Space Quest is one of my favorite freaking games. Of all time, and get some yeah, leisure like, suit Larry in there. You can play through it in ten to fifteen hours, but the beautiful part about it was trying to get it all right the first time and learning what you had to pick up. Because there were times that I'd run for four or five hours and realize I didn't pick up a cinnamon roll at one point. In time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, and, and it's it something you can't it. go back. So now I'm on the so, crappy yeah, store. You go back to it now. You're gonna die. You're stuck in this infinite death loop. So yeah. It, I know it always pissed me. It always got me at the end of certain Sierra games where, like, it would give you your little point total at the bottom when you beat the game. Like, how many actions did you perform? And you're like, 260 out of 263. I'm like, damn it, what did I miss? Yeah, I know, right? All right, so let's uh, let's move on to our last one. Uh, uh, part of news: the final Joker trailer came out. Uh, oh. And how, how I actually worded it, because I did say I wanted to kind of keep to how I, I did it. Laughing matter. The Joker's final trailer came out. Phenomenal. That's all I got to say. Phenomenal. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was I was hyped as hell when I found out Joaquin Phoenix was going to be doing this, because that guy can melt into a role. And I don't know if you guys watch, I, I, when the initial teaser trailer came out or the initial announcement when we did the the following cast uh i told you guys to watch and i don't know if anybody did uh you were never really here uh it was an indie film that he did last year and talk about being able to play somebody who has mental issues well 
it, it was amazing. It was utterly stunning to watch. And I, I love the fact that he did his research to the point where he actually spoke and interacted with people who suffer from uh, it's a mental disorder called pathological laughter. And that's where he developed the laugh that he kicks into high gear in the, in the, in the movie, in the trailer. Uh, and it fits, it fits just as well as the best that Mark Hamill's ever done. So I, I, I am so stoked for this movie. <laughs> I agree with Jack Malice in the chat room. He says, I don't want a jo- I don't want a Joker origin movie, but I do want a Joaquin Phoenix Joker movie. So torn. You know, you know, when I look to when I look at it, um what I appreciate out of it is I think the same thing a lot of a lot of people appreciated uh out of Heath Ledger's Joker. Where it wasn't the can't be my dad's Joker. I uh, even go as far as, like, say, Jack Nicholson's Joker, where it was based off the older, campy kind of Joker things. Yeah. Uh, Heath Ledger's was a more realistic, sadistic guy, and where I think I like this movie in particular. And and I'm gonna I'm gonna eat crow on this because I remember when they first cast, I was like, I don't know, we'll see. Um, this is a this is a like a a real true to life could be happening to this day someone could be out there doing this right now yeah. i mean it's not some kid, guy getting dropped in a, a thing of chemicals not. damn uh, <laughs> those eyes um not it's not a, it's not a person dropped in chemicals uh it's it doesn't seem like it's based out of a hatred toward batman uh yet we know that there are going to be links to it it's just it just looks like a total mental breakdown and, and if which almost an anti-hero some of those uh scenes where you have yeah. people riding wearing the masks and everything uh it, it's interesting to see what they're gonna i i'm really interested to see how they go with that and see if they try to turn yeah. it into an anti-hero actually go it's definitely coming off that way in the trailer what that trailer said to me is that um like like you said it's not going to be a you know, based on Batman or just pure mental illness, it's going to be a guy that has, he's a little bit off, but is just responding to the cruelty of the world and the brokenness of the system. Um, and I'm, I'm intrigued by that aspect. I so think Pete, Pete Opolis more fun to play with than just us. let's cause chaos or whatever. Pete Opolis joined us in the uh, chat room. Uh, he, he, he says he, uh, Heath's Joker was the best true to the mad criminal. He is. Uh, producer Jack jumps back in and says the Joker is not insane. He is ultra sane. Just depends, I guess, on what Joker you're looking at. Yeah, he's he's Wonko from the uh, <laughs> um, Wonko the Sane from the uh, what was it called? Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy series. <laughs> there you go. Um, super sane, yeah, ultra sane. No, it's super sane. There you go. All right. Yeah, it really doesn't make sense to me. It's like. <laughs> so insane that you're sane? No, it's it's he realizes the rest of the world is insane. Like Wonko the Sane in Hitchhiker's Guide, he lives on the beach and lives in a bathroom, but basically he built little uh he, instead of a house, he built the outside of an asylum. So he lives on the beach, which is outside the asylum, and he built the asylum for the rest of the world because one day he looked at individually wrapped toothpicks and realized there were instructions on them. I, I kind of see I kind of see what Jack says on that because I think Heath, Heath Ledger's Joker brought that out, especially if you go back and listen to his conversation he had with Harvey Dent uh, right next to the hospital bed and talking him into it. Uh, he if you if you go back and listen to that, he's actually painting a like, hey, we're cool. It's everyone else that's effed up uh, scenario, which is it actually makes sense which is which really blew my mind when i wa- went back and watched that a- after seeing it in the movies and went and saw it again how amazing that character that joker ended up being so and and this one looks like the makings of a potential potential oscar i mean heath ledger pulled it off why can't he i'm open i don't know if Joaquin's an oscar winner yet but he should be by now Considering, I think he was at least nominated for. I think he was nominated in Gladiator. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think Gladiator is one he was nominated in for supporting actor. But don't worry, Ice is going to correct us because he's going to look it up really quick. 
I am. I'm pretty sure no, it was I guarantee Limbo. it was Claudia. Cult leader. So Ruru 2 doesn't like Joker. Uh, and <laughs> Joker is just dumb. <laughs> and Jack Mouse comes back and says, Joker is comic Jesus. <laughs> there you go. Joker has got to be... Joaquin I, I, Phoenix has been nominated for Best Actor, <clears throat> uh, uh, Supporting Role for Gladiator, and then Best Leading Actor for Walk the Line and The Master. Oh, there we go. There you go, yeah, yeah. Jo Joker is just one of those those characters that you could... I mean, uh, he just goes forever. It's amazing. Uh, and how many different versions of him... It's still unique. Like everyone, everyone keeps forgetting Mark Hamill's version of the Joker is uh, is kind of like that in between spot between Campy and where Heath Ledger took it, and that's that's cartoon. Oh, yeah. That's his voice doing it, which is crazy. So that that's what's you can unique about Joker. He doesn't have superpowers. He's just either like like a lot of people think, incredibly insane, or as the as the as the as the producer says, super sane. sane. Yeah, Super Saiyan. Um, Super Saiyan? Well, we could go that way, too, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> uh, I think we could squeeze this in really quick beforehand. Arrowverse is is in that, that stage where we don't know what's going to happen with it. We know that people are leaving. We know pe new people are coming in. We don't know if the, how long this future of Arrowverse is going to be. So... They have now come out with uh, Arrowverse is going to be coming out with some audiobooks for uh, for you people that love the Arrowverse and just can't get enough of it. You're now going to have Arrowverse coming to the audiobooks. Um, let's see here. I see. Are you familiar with? Because uh, I'm not big in audiobooks. Are you familiar with the uh, company, the cereal boxes that are going to be bringing them out and stuff? I'm, and, uh, I'm really not either. I, I listen to a ton of podcasts. I don't really. Uh, if I'm going to read a book, I'm generally going to just going to read the book. Uh, I know, you know, one of our former cast members, Beacon, he's uh, basically couldn't live without an audible subscription. Um, but it looks like uh, Serial Box is something that has put out high quality stuff before. In fact, uh, when I was reading through what they'd done, I was, I was kind of, uh, it looked like, uh, yeah, I could, I mean, so, they, they, did, they did an Orphan Black sequel audio series, which I don't know if you ever watched Orphan Black, but I loved that show. So I'd be willing to, to go and see, you know, what they do so the so the plot of it is uh it's an eight episode version of the quote of uh, the flash where lex luther has altered the past so the flash arrow and supergirl are now now all bad to the bone fighting for evil and for an altered timeline to become a permanent fixture in the multiverse so they've i i don't know what, what was the movie that just came bright uh brightborn brightburn brightburn yeah seems like that one was that movie was pretty successful as far as uh, the cult following that it got from the movies and everything. It's like, oh my god, what if Superman did go bad? Kind of thing. It looks like they're going to try to kind of move this. Now, I'm hoping when I see cereal box, the one thing I can tell you is that when I think cereal, when I hear the when I hear cereal, I think of the old school cereal films or radio uh, broadcasts where TV wasn't around yeah. and, and families were around the radio. back in the day. Exactly, yeah. uh, the shadow. Um, so I'm hoping to kind of take it to that level, but I mean, hey, Ron, what, what do you think? You think you're going to check these guys out or what? I'm definitely going to give it a try. I mean, I live off of audio books too, so well, I, can't really, I can't really read anymore. My eyes are too jacked up. I, I will say though, the plot sounds interesting. I hope they are able to pull it off. And, uh, do you think they will use the original actors? Or do you think they're going to come out with, uh, alternatives? No, no. I'm, I'm pretty sure Arrow's ending because that Stephen Amell just doesn't want to do it anymore. So yeah, he wants to move on. Yeah. By the way, side note: Have you guys seen those videos from Comic Con about the uh, girl who had cancer who's a big Arrow fan? Have you seen that? No. Okay, so everyone who's watching this or listening to this, you need to do yourself a favor when you get done here. Go watch these videos. I think it's over a three-year period starting in 2016 or 15. Um, but it really does show you, and I guarantee that if a Super was on here, she'd be talking about it because I'm sure she's seen it. Um, it it's about an Arrowverse fan, uh, an actual Air Green Arrow fan himself or herself. Uh, I don't know how old she is, 
Uh, but she goes to Comic Con. She has cancer. That's all I'm gonna tell you. Watch, watch those videos. I guarantee when you get done watching those, it's probably gonna take you about 15, 20 minutes. Your appreciation for what Steve Amell already does, and I, 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 I think it's safe to say that everyone who's on this cast or listening right now have a high have Steve Amell is a high standard. That that guy does a lot for his fans and for the verse, and uh, and is one one of the true true actors that you really would like to meet, hang out with because he is just a down to earth guy. Um, but watch those videos. You you might even kind of shed a tear. I ain't gonna say I did, but maybe I did. Maybe my contacts were dry. Um, all right. So last thing we're gonna talk about, you gotta talk about it. Somebody's um, gotta talk about it. Somebody's gotta talk about it. Thank you very much. Talk about it, talk about it, talk about it. For hire. And what we mean for that is the TSA is dumping on all of our all of us fans of Star Wars, let alone uh, Galaxy's Edge. Uh, yeah. as people know, Galaxy's Edge, since it's come out at Disneyland, has has there's a lot of criticism going on it hasn't been as popular they was expecting but it seemed like they were made to do it who knows big thing was though is that a lot of people were leaving galaxy's edge with uh stealing stuff and everything but now this is just legit when you go to galaxy's edge which i haven't gone yet so unfortunately i'm reading this article and checking it out everything they have some really cool basic souvenirs that you would love to have and it starts off with just like say they're beverages so if you're looking at the article Everything, first of all, is done in Star Wars language or uh, writing. So uh, you'll know what the different drinks are or whatever because the labels are very similar to what we know, Coke, Sprite, and stuff like that. But they do use Star Wars language on there. Um, yeah, which and is apparently the is picture, called it. The lo- it says the logos on them are written in Arabesh, the most common form of galactic basic. Yep. They're presented at stands driven by droids, which is awesome. That's how hardcore Disney went on this, which is awesome. I can't wait to see it. But they look like little thermal detonators, <laughs> which is awesome. The and then and then you have the regular water that no, it just looks like regular water. But the, the actual sodas look like thermal detonators, which is freaking awesome. So you could just buy a soda right off the bat. Of course, it is going to cost you maybe six bucks. I don't know the exact cost, but that's Disney for you. Yeah, for but what you got like about a six ounce like soda. Yeah. I maybe won't be able to buy a two hundred dollar droid, which looks really cool. But man, I'm walking out with my thermal detonator. Two hundred dollar, two hundred dollar lightsaber, one hundred dollar droid. My bad, sorry. Someone, someone's been doing the research. But, yeah, you can walk so out with you your got, thermal detonator. You just can't get it home unless you actually live within like three states. And that's that's what I was about to say. If you are so, if you live in SoCal, if you drive there and everything, hey, you're going to be excited. That's going on your uh, case when you get home and clean it. For all you people that like to fly to San Diego or to Southern California and riddle us with extra traffic because SoCal is awesome, you will not be able to take these back on the plane. The TSA is a little nervous about this and quote, uh, let me get right there. The orange cat arrestor that the Batu collectible Coca-Cola, Diet Coke, and Sprite bottles will not be allowed on flights either in carry-on and uh, or checked-in luggage. The reason cited was they their replica of inert explosives. They look like grenades, in other words, people. So this is our PSA for you. <laughs> Do not put it in your suitcase or you will be not making your flight. Listen, you some of you some of you are smarter than than that and need a job. I'm sure the TSA is hiring. If they can't figure out the difference between soda bottle, thick plastic, and a grenade, if you've ever held a grenade, they're pretty substantial. Um, wow. And, they, and wow. they look nothing like the dream. <laughs> no, it's a round ball. Those drinks plastic. are so much bigger. There's no spoon. There's nothing. Okay. I, I... Well, well, it's there is it's, no spoon. It's, 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 no spoon. <laughs> there is but, no yeah. spoon. The pin. And we're, we're back. Maybe, but no spoon. <laughs> I mean, those look like six ounce sodas. You know, those are those are small. That's a, that's a little an apple sized soda bottle. I can't imagine somebody seeing, like I said, that thin soda bottle plastic. Even if it's six ounces of liquid in somebody's suitcase, you'd have to be a moron to think that, that was. Dangerous. I know this. This makes me wonder how many jugglers have they strip searched? 
<laughs> How many magician scarves have they just pulled if for if hours? They're at, if they're looking at hollowed out plastic things, then they must have pulled over freaking. They, oh, they yeah. must have pulled so many jugglers out of line. And just Absolutely. Been like, what are you doing with hey, bowling? What are you grenades? doing with a thousand grenades in your check bag? Now, I don't know the exact <laughs> composition of a grenade, but I'm assuming that there is some type of metal involved. Mm -hmm. So I, if I'm not mistaken, doesn't our luggage go through metal detectors? One would think. Sure does. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe uh, they're so scared. Maybe they're sc doing all the work. Maybe they're scared of the Die Hard 3 plot. Maybe there's two liquids that are going to interact and become super deadly. <laughs> all right there you go masonic like that reference okay yes yes i like it thank you very much um yeah so but i am excited man just seeing those though make me want to go to disneyland now just so i could take a flight somewhere with those makes me want to coke damn product placement damn it they got us again yeah, and by the way, I'm sure they're probably going to cost 10 bucks for, like you said, those six ounces of that Coke beverage. So if anything, they better have, like, McDonald's Coke in there because I don't know what they do to it, but that stuff is yes. fantastic. It's so much better. Either that or the freaking bottled uh, Coke from Mexico. Well, real okay. Coke with cane sugar, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or we can go back to the original formula, formula with Coke. Yeah, let's do that. Oh, I don't right, think we yeah. can afford that at this, at this point. <laughs> I don't have that kind of bank account. Maybe I should start uh, a traveling sales wagon or a traveling medicine wagon. Then I'd have, have my own. But here's the thought for people that really want to take it home but can't. Just FedEx it to yourself. It works. Yeah. That's a good call on that one. Until so FedEx. You got no rules. <laughs> Until FedEx is like, oh my god, we got a grenade in this box. <laughs> hey, I, I'm gonna tell you this though: you gotta be, you gotta be a hardcore Disney fan slash Star Wars if you're gonna take two of those or three of those that might be empty, maybe weigh three grams. I don't know, <laughs> and you're gonna pay twenty bucks for that. <laughs> to ship them home. I mean, collectors. Yeah, you can't get it where we live. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense to me. It's like we can't get it here in Texas. And yeah, at that point, you're shipping them full. You're gonna ship. Ooh, I got an idea. We can. Get, I see. I think. <laughs> I think there's three profit. Yes, I think we need to go to a Galaxy's Edge and just go ahead and invest a couple hundred bucks into these and put them on. Hey, hey. we're gonna trade. Right, well, I'm, I'm gonna need to sell you some should. blood first. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna sell organs for seed money. <laughs> we sell them on eBay. Oh, man. Well, guys, that's the show. We made it through without our uh, fearless leader, Mest, uh, and my camera, which is sounds like I'm still going eight <laughs> once in a while. So um, we thank you guys for uh, tuning in tonight. We really do. I hope you guys had a lot of fun with the show. I appreciate you guys coming back and, and taking me back in. It's much appreciated. Um, yeah, hey, we had a yeah, you know, they were desperate. They needed somebody. I know. No. Hey, Ron, where can these fine uh, viewers and fans of our show follow you, sir? Uh, you can follow me at Das Newport Kid on Instagram, Twitter, and on both Xbox Live and PlayStation Network. Awesome. Uh, Raider, Nick, where, they can, where can they follow you, sir? If you have the balls, you can follow me at Raider0314 on Twitter and PlayStation Network. That was a weird challenge. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Not flex, but okay. Hashtag sure. of the week. It's you very, have very odd hashtag flex. Of, hashtag How of many the of them do I need? Do you, do you have next balls? If you have the balls, you can follow do me. I need a, do I need a collection of them? I just, no, I just have to have the balls. I, w I would have had them, but I went through TSA screening. <laughs> <laughs> like the big bouncy ones that you can get. You remember the big at like Target that have the big cage of them with bungee ropes? Do I need those balls? You mean the oh. one that I dove into at the Walmart the other day? <laughs> those yeah. will be acceptable. Oh. The ones that you just oh. punch across the store? <laughs> Hopefully not the ones that I'm sure Nick still sees on the daily basis, which are those truck nuts. <laughs> I actually saw some this morning going to work. I, I knew it. And it was on the back of a Mustang. 
Not a truck, a bus landing. Uh, I was like, what the heck are you thinking? Well, they weren't thinking. They're clearly a lower enlisted person. <laughs> Some people just laughed a lot at that joke. Mm-hmm. I see where they follow you, sir. <laughs> uh, you can follow me at IC Zorro on PlayStation Network, Twitter, Instagram. Yeah, that's about it. Awesome. And apparently because of my camera not working, you can follow me by sending me snail mail at this address and maybe Pony Express. I don't know. Um, Masonic yeah, Vader. Talker, get to the smoke signals. <laughs> Masonic Vader on the PlayStation Network. Masonic Vader 71 on Instagram. And uh, I think next week you'll be seeing, uh, as long as my 8-bit camera works, well, I think we might get another uh, cast of SmackDown in uh, Smack Talk next week. So uh, check us out there. Thank you guys so much. Please go to our, our, our host site, Malice Corp. Check out all of our fine videos from prior shows. If you're on Amazon, please subscribe. It's free. Amazon Prime is free on Twitch. So f- please subscribe and help us out. Thank you guys so much. You guys have a wonderful week. We will see you next week. You guys keep staying nerdy. Carry on. And fade out.